Hi all, welcome to this video tutorial on embedded systems. These are the important topics in module 5. So I am going to handle uh, the topic interrupt handling in RTOS. These are some of the important uh, subtopics in this module. Interrupt service routine, interrupt routine in RTOS, direct call to an ISR by interrupting source, RTOS first interrupted on an interrupt, then OS calling ISR, RTOS first interrupted on an interrupt, then OS calling a fast ISR, and the fast ISR calls a slow ISR. And also we will be discussing some of the previous year questions. ISR ISR stands for interrupt service routine. An ISR uh, is also called an interrupt handler. It is a software process and it is invoked by an interrupt request from a hardware device. In this figure, it is clear that uh, the green uh, line represents a low priority task and red line represents a high priority task. When a high priority task is arrived at that time, uh, the low priority task is preempted and the control is given to the uh, high priority task and the execution of high priority task takes place. After completion of this high priority task, the control is returned back to uh, the low priority task and uh, the execution of the low priority task uh, again continues. The ISR handles the request. Suppose uh, the request from a hardware device and uh, it will send this request to the CPU uh, by interrupting the active process. Uh, when this ISR is complete, the process is resumed. A basic example of this ISR is a routine that handles keyboard events such as pressing or releasing a key. Each time when the key is pressed, the ISR processes the input. This is one of the examples for this uh, ISR. Interrupt routine in RTOS environment. In a system, the ISR should function as following. ISRs have the higher priorities over the RTOS functions and the tasks. An ISR should not wait for a semaphore, mailbox message or queue message. But there are three alternative ways uh, for systems to respond to hardware source calls from the interrupts. These three methods are the important topics uh, in this section. First method is direct call to an ISR by an interrupting source. The process and steps are explained in the figure at the right side. Uh, now we are going to discuss uh, each steps. So when an interrupt occurs, the process running at the CPU is interrupted and the ISR corresponding to that source starts executing. This is shown in the step 1. Next, after that a hardware source call and ISR directly. Now look at the figure. Each steps are represented using corresponding numbers. Uh, now the ISR just sends an ISR enter message. That is a step 2. And uh, this is actually uh, to inform the RTOS that an ISR has taken already the control of the CPU. This ISR enter message is stored at the memory allotted for the OS message. This is the step 3. And then finally, when the ISR finishes, it sends an exit message to the RTOS and return back to OS functions or the task. Second method, RTOS first interrupting on an interrupt, then RTOS calling the corresponding ISR. The figure is given at the right side. When a task is interrupted, let it be the kth task, then the RTOS will get the hardware source code. Then after saving the present processor status, it initiates the corresponding ISR. Then uh, the ISR during execution can post one or more op outputs for events and messages into the mailboxes or queues. From this figure, at the st first step, the interrupt occurs. And then during the second step, it will save the current context that is the context k and after that uh, in the third step it, it will start executing the ISR and after finishing the ISR it will return back to complete the kth task. The ISR must be short and it must simply put post the messages for another task. This task uh, runs the remaining codes whenever it is scheduled. RTO schedules only the processes and switches the context between the task only. ISR executes only during a temporary suspension of a task. This is what we had already seen. 
uh, after completing the ISR, uh, the temporarily suspended ta task again starts execution. Third method, RTS first interrupts calls to corresponding ISR, then ISR sending messages to ISTs. Corresponding figure is given at the right side. In this case, uh, when an interrupt occurs, the RTS first gets the hardware source code. This is shown in the step 1. And then it will initiate the corresponding ISR only after finishing uh, the other sections which are currently active and then saving the process status. This is uh, the step 2. Then the ISR executes the device. The ISRs during execution uh, can then send one or more outputs for the events and message into mailboxes or queues for ISTs. IST means interrupt service thread. This is the step 4. Just before the end, uh, the ISR unmasks uh, the further preemption from the same or other hardware sources. The ISTs are stored in the memory and uh, the ISTs uh, that have received messages from the ISR may execute uh, by considering the priorities uh, on return from the ISR. After that, uh, in step 7, uh, when no, no more ISR or IST is pending for execution in memory, uh, it will return to OS. In the first step, the interrupt occurs, that is the RTOS gets a hardware source code. Next, uh, during the step 2, uh, as I told earlier, it will uh, initiate the ISR only after saving the current context. So here, the context K is saved. In step 3, the ISR starts execution. In step 4, the ISR sends outputs for the events. And next in step 5, uh, just before the end, the ISR enables the further preemption. And in step 6, the ISTs in the memory executes as per priorities. Uh, this ISTs in the memory will receive messages from the ISRs. After that, finally, when no ISR or IST is pending, uh, the control will be returned to OS. An RTS can provide two levels of interrupt service routines, uh, that is ISRs. They are an FL ISR and uh, SL ISR. FL ISR is fast level ISR and uh, SL ISR is low level ISR. The FL ISR, that is fast level ISR, can be also called as hardware interrupt ISR. And the slow level ISR uh, is also called as software interrupt ISR. Uh, this first level ISR is called uh, just the ISR in the RTOS and the slow level ISR is actually the inter service thread we, that we had discussed earlier. Uh, the ISR uh, also known as fast level ISR simply uh, we can say the ISRs in the RTOS must be short, uh, run critical and necessary codes only. Also they must simply send the initiate call or messages to the inter service threads into the memory. The main function of uh, the slow level ISR that is the inter service threads uh, is it runs the remaining codes as per schedule by considering the priorities. This slow level ISR runs device independent codes as per the device priorities on the signals from the ISR. The ISTs that is a slow level ISR uh, run in the kernel space. The system priorities are in order of ISR, then IST, and then the task. Now, this is one previous year question uh, from this topic. Question is, explain the three methods of ISR's handling in the RTOS with examples. And also, you have to explain each of these methods uh, by using the corresponding figures and proper explanations that we have discussed so far and here is what we learned what is ISR interrupt routines in RTOS environment three systems for the OSs to respond to the hardware source calls from the interrupts and the two levels of ISR that is the fast level ISR and the slow level ISR thank you